Let's do a little video here on a Kirka village. This basically is where I am from. You're going to get more feedback from me in respect to the post I have just posted here right now. Uh, it's the post I'm referring to right here. This is very important for me, this stuff here, uh, because the people, the neighbors, I was sure it was the neighbors only, just to have realized that it was way more than a neighbor, just to realize it was an entire village that was implicated in this crime against me. But it wasn't against me only, it was also against the father. I don't know how much mother um, did she have to do this stuff or what's going on. Um, but this is the kind of stuff they have the police for. This here, this is our house right here at the beginning, at the, at the beginning of the village like this. As you enter the village, that this here behind these trees that you see, this would be our house. And so I'm going to do a little tour here. And this is the neighbor right across here. His name is Don Colenz. And uh, he was implicating in a crime against me before I even left the United States of America. This basement here that you see here, this basement here, this, this window here, let me demonstrate to you. So that's why I said I'm going to do like a little video today before I go, even this I will do. This here is where, accordingly with the police instructions, he would deliver me inside in there and start to abuse me with other neighbors. This here, this area here. Uh, help me look through the window, remind me that I'm right in front of basically our own home. Yeah, house. The whole thing started in 1990. And just few steps, three years later, yeah, is when this all this stuff started. It started through the individual also, uh, who was accordingly with the Milan Kuchan, with the Borat Pahor and Tanya Fayon, he was using uh, photographs from the, he affiliated himself with a people from, Auschwitz with the people with internees from Auschwitz, Dachau, and so on, uh, bullied me, started to engage in violence, uh, guaranteed me in 1992, as I started boxing here, the local Novomaster Club, uh, and have learned that the Russians went ahead and have implanted me with a cancer in Moscow in the left arm. Came inside of our house and guaranteed that my boxing career is finished, that I'm actually done over with, that I already have the cancer, guaranteed me complete failure. Uh, engaged in a violence with the police and uh, associate himself. This, this was before they even started with a terror at the memorials dedicated to the partisans, to the, to the National Front liberation uh, from a Nazi Germany during World War, World War II in uh, Slovenia. Uh, this individual was a Serb from a Bosnia, this individual who started with this kind of violence. He would, he would pull these photos from the internees, from the Auschwitz.
But this was already like very, very, very established procedure because this guy knew completely what he was doing. You know, this was not somebody who would start and would not know what the fuck he was doing. This guy knew, he was from the Novo Mesto city. He lived here in the Novo Mesto city, but he was really a Serb who was from, uh, it did not look like this. This was the police officer that also other police officers, investigators, later on, they continued to develop this strategy uh, to make to see themselves, to video record themselves, uh, rather than my death threatening them, dispersing my frustration, anger, uh, asking me about those internees, if I see them and this and that, they look like them and this and that, would you do with me the same thing like uh, Hitler did to them and this and that? And it is the only thing they wanted to get is basically response that was all based on a torture. That's how this stuff started, yeah? So this guy in 1993, in 1992, guaranteed me that my boxing career was finished, and it was the Russians in Moscow who terminated my career. He said, you're going to see what is going to happen. Your career already is over. Well, you, yes, he said, you're going to see. I guarantee you, he said. You're going to see, yeah? That's how it all went with a cancer in a left arm, in my case. Uh, a Serp, I remember him. His age probably at the time, I estimate, was about probably close to somewhere 50, I would say. Uh, he was about in his 50, I would say, between 45 and 50 was this Serp, who also began to guarantee me death and became so increasingly violent that they had to stop his MKUltra involvement, torture, sometimes like in 1998, and since would only be allowed to appear here and there, not anymore was not allowed to participate actively in a torture against me as much as, as it all started, Novo Mesto police, Novo Mesto, the, the police director who traveled in 1990 to Moscow with exactly Miroslav ne Berger, who is this individual here, and another individual whose house you can see behind his house, that's a quarter, Igor Quarter. That's a physician, Dr. Igor Quarter. Yeah. All these people are very, very acquainted with the individual I'm talking about. It's a black hair individual. Easily I can point his photo on exactly what he looked like back then. It's very easy to identify him because I remember his face as clear as if it would be right here, right now in front of me, like this. This here, this is the neighbor. Neighbor, oftentimes, his name is Dan Colenz. You know, if I write this down, it looks like this. This is how it all started. It didn't start with the beatings in front of uh, memorials dedicated to the partisans. It's very, very, very important for me to declare this stuff. Very, very important for me to declare this stuff on how this whole thing started. Yeah, that's exactly how. My family... For instance, my knees, my knees facially looked like this, like this, like this would be her photo. It's exactly what it is. It was also my family that adopted the same strategy. 
They wanted to isolate me and present me to the world as an ultimate neo-Nazi as a hater. I had to do with the Nazism as much as you have with the last year's snow. That's exactly as much. But the goal was to create a certain personality, which it wasn't the first time that it happened. I think the Russians had a good experience doing that stuff already. So they would fit the needs of the Russia. Because in 1990, Russia negotiated with Americans together a nuclear disarmament of Ukraine. And I became, as a defender of Ukrainian nuclear weaponry program, inherit from the Soviet Union the ultimate enemy from the Russia. Somebody from the Eastern Europe that objected, drugged up inside of the Moscow to the Yeltsin and his team, Putin, so vehemently nuclear disarmament in the face of their in their face, so defiant, determined to stand up against Ukrainian politicians alone, uh, that I became just the ultimate enemy of Russia back then. That's basically exactly the way this stuff happened. Got to be detailed about this stuff. Okay. This individual, Dana Kolenz, would continue to remind about what he did with his friends, with his whole colleagues, also with the neighbors here, with other neighbors also. In 95, in 96, you know, in 97, 98, uh, in 95, I departed to United States of America. And they anticipated as I would return prematurely due to forced unemployment in the United States of America, probably irritated and so on. Uh, that this he, this basement, would play the ultimate role. Uh, they armed him, uh, they prepared them for the conflict. Therefore, for my return from the United States, my premature return from the United States of America, which did not happen until the August of 2006, I never returned from the United States of America on my own. That was 11 and a half years I avoided this garbage. And when I returned, I had enough money to also leave for a bit more. As I knew I'm going to need that money, as I knew I'm going to need something. But the U.S. government worked very, very hard. Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan were the two American presidents that convinced me, next to John McCain, that after all, it is the best. For Ukraine to give up its nuclear weaponry to Russia. Claimed that in case of nuclear war, in case of war, they would be defending Ukraine at a time. And if I would not go along with them as a toward the last to resist this American pressure that everybody faced on behalf of London, therefore a nuclear disarmament, that I would just become completely irrelevant. So it was already that everybody passed this resolution about a nuclear disarmament. All the Ukrainians did. So I still didn't. And then they got the approval from me for nuclear disarmament of Ukraine by suggesting me that I would become completely irrelevant in the group, in this Illuminati group, despite my being drugged up. They claim everybody started like this, like I did. And so for me to remain with such a big people, you do have to go and, you know, they assured me it's going to be the U.S., it's going to defend NATO and so on, if it's going to be the war and stuff and this, and that we all have to work together, it's in our best interest and so on. Yeah? This man oftentimes got drunk, this Donacolens. During MK Ultra, it was his normal. He was a drunk, oftentimes. All through, I have never seen him drunk. 
people used to be happy back in his day. Sometimes, yeah, he was probably drunk. I never went there to visit him. But during MK Ultra, he repeatedly was drunk and violent. But he had a good backup for his violence. He had a strong backup for his violence. Just the house away from our house and his house. Yeah. Miroslav Berger and Dr. Igor Kotar had uh, another powerful arsenal in hand. From this house here, Zdenko Yerman is a police officer who moved to his wife in Bizelsko. Extremely violent individual who also had a brother whom he also have, I understand, also educated to monitor, video monitor our house, if it's to believe this. Right next to his house, there's another cousin, all these people involved, before 95. This was no MK Ultra. This is something else. This is a genocide via through the use of MK Ultra. Is uh, the house that you see right there, which is actually this house here that you see. That's basically is the way it was. That house right there. That's another Yerman, and his name is Metot, and he became a very very he gained very very high. Uh, Title position inside of the Ljubljana, and the one who opened him the promotion, fast acceleration uh, within the police force in Slovenia, was Milan Kuchan. It was Borut Pahor, and it was because this guy was totally dedicated to go and fuck me if necessary, completely on his own. But he had a conspiracy theory. Like all these people always had, you know, if you will prove this and if you will prove that and so on and so forth. And so, whenever I disagreed with this violence during MK Ultra and began to threaten back and was completely incompliant with violence, um, this man would only run. To this guy here that you see. Yeah? And it would be this guy who would storm with the violence on me. They would start immediately with the violence. But Miroslav Berger also has a son, Alish, who also is just as violent. And then, since this guy here was not at home, with his police uniform, this is the guy who would also transfer me from the prison in Ljubljana, where the Slovenian government would sit me during MK Ultra sessions. At times, they have a different prison facilities, and during the torture, they would exercise next to mental disability homes, psychiatric uh, hospitals, not hospital only, Maribor also, Vojnik also, uh, home for elderly people, they also use prison, jail, uh, from where they would transfer me on MK Ultra, uh, as they refer to this as uh, learning about Slovenia, having the ability to identify the people. Yes, this is the way it went. So when this guy returned, if he somehow was not capable to assist his cousin due to his absence, due to time he would spend with his wife, uh, when he would return, he would hike right here to this guy here, and then this violence would be then confirmed, the guarantee that if I ever even dare to say something like this, it's going to be not even the police that's going to come. The instructions were actually that the police would call, what they do is, what they, the two of these guys claimed me, they first call to see where there is a police officer in the area. And these guys guaranteed me that what they would do is they would just come with a gun 
to our house or whatever the case would be, especially if they would get me here in the street and they would just gun me down, basically, before the police would even have access to meet me. That was the arrangement they had made with the Nova Mesta police. So just for me to explain what kind of village this is, what this shit is. Entire village was involved in a torture. Entire village participated in a torture. There is no house here that was not involved in a torture, not a single one. With some people unhappy about what they have seen, I'm not going to say that everybody was the same, uh, but uh, the majority ruled with the violence. It was just a village that created its own rules in Slovenia. This is why Milosevic, this is why Karadzic, this is why Mladic, this is why Serbian butchers that were trialed in Hag didn't mind to visit this place here. And the village began to uh, started to populate with the ethnic Serbs. They started to deliver them. They had to get married with the Serbs and so on. Yeah. So I thought I would just give you like a little presentation about this place here for you to understand that this was a place, this was a place for me where I was basically as good as that. Actually, this was far worse. Because it was really, really inside of this village, just basically waiting for exactly what I stated to you. This is the this is the neighbors. This is basically this is the environment I was in. Yeah. This is how it is. This is under which circumstances the last 33 years of my life I have spent. That's how it all developed. Thank you for watching this video. But this is just something uh, that I will continue to um, resolve because I don't plan on missing resolving on this issue. These people did absolutely everything possible for what uh, local police director claimed me would be the best for him, at least that he would turn the village against me, this and that. This village was turned against me already a very, very long time ago. And I'm not going to be mistaken, this village, for the last 33 years, this village did to me. Under absolutely no Jana Zogulin, novel master director circumstances. This village is located in Slovenia. Slovenia is inside of the European Union. And I'm also an American citizen. So for this violence here that went on, I am going to expect, demand some explanation from Slovenian state for what exactly took place, with what right have things developed against me in a, such a brutal way in this, inside of this village. I, for this here, for this stuff here that I suggested, for this mechanic here that actually was fixing the car and stuff like this. Um, his brother was doing business with the Serbs. Uh, he would travel to Serbia and so on. I, man, I don't know uh, what to tell you. Was it like a nature uh, basically to survive or uh, that they just had to do the stuff like this? It looked like they were extremely, extremely happy with their meetings with their with the Serbian brothers. They, they didn't really mind. They didn't have a problem with it. Some of which they brought them into the family straight. If it was all like this and all like that, I mean, they tied blood relations to confirm everything in the face of Slovenian politicians, in the face of the Serbian politicians, as per, you know, what this place is all about. Yeah, so this is just something is going to continue to develop. Uh, and it's not going to be accordingly with prescription, I know. It's troublesome. It's conflicting of 
a local people from this village. I don't think, look, that you have the authority to think, that you have the right to actually decide about something like this. And you know, you were part of this, so we're going to come to an end to this.